astronauts on board the International Space Station will be getting some new digs. Yeah. NASA is getting ready to send a giant inflatable house to space this spring. They hope it will one day give astronauts more living space. NASA is calling it the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, or BEAM. <laughs> CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us now from Merritt Island, Florida. Always nice to see you, Bill. Explain uh, to us, explain to us exactly what this beam is and how NASA expects it to work. Well, you know, NASA loves an acronym, as you say, and so it's known <laughs> as Beam. And the idea is, once this module collapsed, if you will, takes up less volume on the rocket that has to carry it up to space. So that's a huge advantage. Get it up to the space station. station they're going to attach it to one of the ports there, and then they'll inflate it. So the thing will actually expand as it's attached to the space station. And then the plan is to simply sit there and let it work. Uh, they're not going to live inside this module. This is an experiment. They're going to occasionally go inside to check sensors, things like pressure, temperature, you know, all of those sorts of things. But then they'll most of the time leave it sealed up just to make sure that it's working okay and that it'll hold pressure over a long period of time. But as you say, if this technology works, it offers some major advantages if you're building, for example, a habitation module to go to Mars uh, or, or anything where astronauts have to live and work for a long period of time, perhaps on deep space missions NASA hopes to launch in the 2020s or 2030. So it's got a lot of potential, but this first time around is an experiment, and so they're not going to go inside very often. So what does it mean for future expeditions if this is successful, Bill? Well, you know, they're always talking these days about going to Mars in the 2030s, and they had their Orion capsule. Uh, which they're building to carry astronauts, you know, from the Earth's surface up into space, and that capsule will make the trip, presumably, to Mars or some nearby asteroids. But you can't live in that capsule for a long period of time, not the months that it would take to get to Mars. You're going to need some kind of a habitation module. And so something like this, an inflatable module, it would be cheaper to launch. It takes up less space in the rocket, so that has all kind of advantages all by itself. This might be a good solution for some of those uh, future modules, habitation modules you're going to need for these deep space missions. Now, Robert Bigelow, the man who owns the company that, that is building this module, he wants to build a commercial space station, uh, something that would be uh, several of these inflatable modules attached together that you could then, you know, well, uh, I'll say rich, space tourists uh, could afford a ride up there to spend some time on a commercial space station. That's his long-range plan, but it's got a lot of potential both in Earth orbit and for NASA's downstream plans for exploration. Hmm, really interesting. Bill, before you go, Amazon's Blue Origin recently completed its third successful unmanned rocket launch. How do you see this impacting the future of space travel? Well, you know, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon and the owner of Blue Origin, uh, he is trying to make commercial spaceflight pay off. And the way he wants to do that is with routine suborbital flights. In other words, be able to launch these rockets over and over and over again and, think of, and, and perhaps achieve the sort of scales that allow them to lower the price per ticket so that lots of people can eventually fly in space. That's his long-range plan. Of course, there are other companies in, entering this commercial space marketplace, so things are definitely heating up. He clearly has a, a, a good design. He's reliably launched it now three times, plans to launch it many more times this year uh, before they put people on board uh, to perfect the technology. All right, Bill Harwood, thanks so much as always, sir. Appreciate it.